The first ever Burkean Viking to befriend and train a dragon, Hiccup Horrendous Haddock III, is a legendary figure in the world of how to train your dragon. Son of Stoic the Vast, heir to the chiefdom of Burk, this young man changed the way that people lived with his willingness to see things a different way. Eventually, he took up the role of chief himself. Welcome back to Channel Frederator. Today we're going to be delving deep into the life and times of Hiccup from the How to Train Your Dragon franchise. Make sure you like this video and subscribe for more like this. Let's get this party started. Early Life Hiccup was born prematurely to Stoic the Vast and his wife Valka. Valka worried that he would not survive, but Stoic remained resolute that his son would grow to be strong. Hiccup was given a small axe by his father and a sewed dragon toy by his mother. During a dragon raid, a Stormcutter dragon entered their home and curiously played with Hiccup. Valka witnessed this and saw the goodness in dragons, but she startled the creature, causing it to accidentally cut Hiccup's chin with a wing claw. Hiccup cried, alerting his father to the dragon's presence. Stoic and the dragon fought, resulting in the house burning down and Valka being abducted. From here, Stoic was left to raise his son on his own. This experience made Hiccup afraid of dragons, even going so far as to toss his dragon toy away on a fishing trip with his dad. Stoic was overprotective of Hiccup thanks to these events, and Valka remained away from Burke so as to continue to hide her love of dragons. Everyone on the island assumed that she was eaten by a dragon. Hiccup learned from his father that one day he would be chief of the island. He was also told about the Hidden World, a secret place where dragons lived. Stoic promised to find it and end the conflict between dragons and vikings. One night, Hiccup saw his father weeping by the fire and was invited to sit by him. It was then that he asked if his dad would ever find a new wife, but Stoic said that he didn't want another. This prompted a lesson on love, loss, and life, with there being no greater gift than love. He also learned lessons from his father through board games, like to always think carefully before making big decisions. Later, Hiccup found an injured bird while hiking with his father. Not wanting to mercy kill the animal, Hiccup begged Stoic to help it. The chief did, putting together a makeshift splint and telling Hiccup that the bird was now his responsibility. He had to care for it until it was ready to fly on its own. The young lad was scared of his father's performance at the Snuggletog pageant, as the bearded chief's performance of violence was a little too realistic. As he grew, Hiccup tended to stay smaller and weaker than his peers. His father had him assist Gobber in smithing in the hopes that this would bulk him up. By the time he was 11, Hiccup was ridiculed, causing him to vow revenge. Stoic reminded him that a good chief doesn't seek revenge and instead makes the best decisions for his tribe. Eventually, Stoic felt ashamed of Hiccup, complaining about his flights of fancy and referring to him as a bad viking. This didn't stop Hiccup from learning from Gobber and inventing his own devices, however. Ending the Dragon War Using a bola launcher of his own design, dubbed the Mangler, Hiccup snuck off and shot down the deadliest dragon around, the Night Fury. However, Stoic didn't believe him. Hiccup goes to find his kill and discovers that the dragon is still alive. Unable to bring himself to kill the dragon, he frees it, allowing it to pin him and roar before leaving. Hiccup, now enrolled in dragon training by his father, does not fare very well in learning to fight and kill. This earns more mocking from his peers. He's not too keen on killing dragons as he's started to befriend the Night Fury he injured, now named Toothless, based on its retractable teeth. Hiccup makes a prosthetic tail fin to replace the one lost in the dragon's crash landing. With this, Toothless can fly with Hiccup's help. Their friendship provides Hiccup with valuable dragon fighting insight, like how to incapacitate a dragon by scratching a certain spot under their chin. This gives him a leg up in dragon training and earns him the title of Viking Prodigy. Soon, Hiccup's double life is discovered by Astrid Hofferson, who threatens to tell everyone. He convinces her to hold back and takes her on a flight to cool her down. During this ride, they spot the Red Death in the dragon's nest that Burke had been trying to destroy. Once they land, Hiccup asks that Astrid keep this a secret as he is loyal to Toothless. She punches him on the shoulder and kisses him on the cheek. During a training session where he's expected to kill a monstrous nightmare, Hiccup claims that dragons aren't what we think they are and that we don't have to kill them. This is blasphemy to his father, who loses his temper. Hiccup tries to prove he's right by befriending the dragon, but Stoic agitates the creature enough to get it to attack. Toothless hears Hiccup scream and comes to the rescue just in time, revealing himself to the Vikings. 
Hiccup tries to explain why he's gone against the Viking way of life, but the adults will not listen. Stoic commandeers Toothless to lead him to the dragon's nest. Astrid asks Hiccup about everything, noting his refusal to kill dragons was actually a strength. Hiccup teaches Astrid and the other teens how to ride dragons, and they take all the training dragons kept in the arena to find the adults. They catch up to them and see them fighting a losing battle against the Red Death. Hiccup tries to free Toothless from the chains attached to his father's ship, but the Red Death sinks the vessel. Stoic saves Hiccup and Toothless, and the father-son duo share a moment of mutual respect. Hiccup and Toothless take to the skies to fight the Red Death themselves, and actually manage to kill it with a plasma bolt from Toothless. This causes a chain reaction explosion and knocks Toothless's prosthetic tail off, sending them careening down into the inferno below. Toothless forms a protective shield around Hiccup with his wings, and the two warriors are found by a very grateful Stoic. Hiccup remains unconscious for a week and wakes up to find that he lost his lower left leg in the battle. Thankfully, Gobber puts together a prosthetic for him, one that fits right in with Toothless's control stirrup. Hiccup gets another punch-kiss combo from Astrid, and the Islanders finally accept dragons as friends, not foes. Tracking down the Bone Napper Hiccup convinces his pals to help him track down the dragon that burned down Gobber's house after Gobber struck out on his own to find the beast. On their journey to find the Bone Napper, Gobber tells many stories about his encounters with the dragon, all ridiculous and all ending in an attempt to steal his belt. The other teens don't believe the stories, but Hiccup gives him a chance. Eventually, after crashing onto the Bone Napper's island, even Hiccup grows tired of these tall tales. Of course, that's when the Bone Napper finally shows up. Hiccup spots a hole in the dragon's bone armor and realizes that Gobber's belt buckle is the perfect fit. Gobber reluctantly gives up the buckle, which renders the dragon friendly and also results in a pantsless Gobber. Other bone nappers hear the dragon's mating call, drawing more of the species to Burke. Toothless's first Snoggletog After practicing a new trick together, Hiccup and Toothless run into a swarm of dragons, leaving Burke, knocking Hiccup's helmet off. When the duo returns home, they're assailed by questions from villagers about the dragons, questions Hiccup cannot answer. Folks wonder what they should do for Snoggletog without their dragons, and Hiccup supports Astrid's idea to come up with new traditions. Hiccup feels bad that Toothless can't go with the dragons, as the injured Night Fury can't fly on his own, so he gets to work on a new tale for his pal. While sampling Yaknog from Astrid, he completes the new prosthetic and pops it on Toothless. The dragon flies off, leaving Hiccup alone and worried that his friend might not return. Hiccup accidentally hitches a ride on Meatlug, who is chained up in a barn. He ends up on an island where all the dragons and god to lay their eggs. Not finding Toothless, he convinces Hookfang to give him a ride, unexpectedly causing other dragons to start their migration home. With some careful maneuvering and the help of an old ship, they get back to Burke. There, the villagers celebrate, and Toothless returns with Hiccup's lost helmet. The next day, Toothless insists that Hiccup put his old tail on, even after Hiccup puts on the new one. Toothless smashes the new tail, implying that he'd rather have Hiccup help him fly. Freedom and friendship, what a combo. New dragons and the war with the outcasts. Even though dragons are now an integral part of life on Burke, some villagers continue to have trouble with the creatures. Hiccup comes up with a plan to help teach the villagers how to work with the dragons, prompting Stoic to offer up the old arena as a space for a training academy. After this, Hiccup does his best to get Gobber back on his feet after dragon-killing weapons go out of vogue. After a few disastrous incidents, including Gobber trying to make dragon saddles, Hiccup helped Gobber find his calling as a dragon dentist. On another adventure, Hiccup, Astrid, Toothless, and Astrid's dragon get caught in an avalanche, but the dragons are able to make an air pocket which they use to escape. They, along with the other riders, then teach Burke's livestock that the dragons can be protective of them, allowing for a bigger yield of food. Later, Hiccup and Fishlegs find a baby dragon, and Toothless tries to warn them of the danger of its fire-breathing mother, which manifests as apparent jealousy. Mildew, the village curmudgeon, frames all the dragons for things going wrong around the island. Hiccup tries to prove that these issues are not the dragon's fault, but Stoic ends up banishing the creatures to Dragon Island anyways. Whoops. This leaves the village defenseless, allowing their longtime enemies, the outcasts, to attack. Their leader, Alvin the Treacherous, is looking for Dragon Conqueror Hiccup, unaware that Hiccup is Stoic's young son. Hiccup gives himself up and tricks Alvin into bringing him to Dragon Island, where he gets the dragons to help fight off the outcasts. With this, the adults realize how important the dragons are to their safety, welcoming them back into Burke. Hiccup tries to teach Stoic how to fly a dragon in order to prove that doing things the new way can be better than relying on tradition. This results in Stoic using Toothless a whole lot, keeping the dragon too busy for Hiccup. Stoic finds a new rogue dragon and Hiccup helps him train it. 
Although it's rough, especially as Stoic relies on his old-fashioned mindset, Hiccup is pleased when his father and the new dragon actually bond. Later, a family portrait is commissioned of Stoic and Hiccup, depicting Hiccup as big and buff. This bothers Hiccup, especially as his dad seems pleased with this depiction. To prove himself, Hiccup takes on a bunch of dangerous tasks, almost getting killed multiple times. In the end, Hiccup is able to accept that he is great as he is, learning that another chief's son, who was particularly wealthy and wise, was also lanky. Mildew returns to the spotlight when they plant blue oleander flowers in an attempt to make the dragons sick. Hiccup finds a venom to cure the dragons. When a strange girl washes up on the shore following a shipwreck, Hiccup tries to help her despite Astrid's suspicions. The girl turns out to have ulterior motives, being sent by Alvin to steal the Book of Dragons. Astrid comes up with a plan to get the book back and pretends to be Heather. When they start to fight the outcasts, it's revealed that Heather was being blackmailed by Alvin, and she joins Burke in the fight against Alvin's goons. Hiccup and the teens succeed in retrieving the Book of Dragons. During Thawfest, Hiccup gets a little too braggadocious, as for the first time, he'll have the advantage in a competition with the inclusion of dragons. He realizes how extra he's being and takes it down a notch, earning a kiss from Astrid. Soon after, he comes up with the idea to build dragon perches around the village. Lightning storms become more common, and after the villagers build a statue of Thor, they think about shipping Toothless out. Hiccup then realizes that the perches are the things attracting lightning, because they're made of metal. When a bunch of holes show up on the island, Toothless starts acting weird. Hiccup finds the source of the holes, a whispering death, a dragon that Toothless insists on fighting alone. After Hiccup almost dies and then comes up with a plan to make Toothless let him help, the duo drive the dangerous dragon off and plug up the remaining holes. Hiccup comes up with a plan to save Fishleg's dragon from the visiting Berserker tribe and stages a dragon attack to scare them off. One day, Snoutlout refuses to listen to Hiccup and flies off on his own. Hiccup chases him down and they're caught in a water spout, trapping them on Outcast Island. Hiccup is kidnapped by Alvin and Toothless convinces Snoutlout to rescue him. Stoic, Gobber, and Hiccup are looking for Johan's ship after he didn't arrive in time. Apparently there's something that Stoic really wanted on there. Hiccup breaks away from the group to find Johan himself and learns from the shipwrecked trader that the item in question is for Hiccup, from Hiccup's mother. This prompts the young dragon rider to collect his pals and head to Breakneck Bog to find the supposed fog monster. This turns out to be a pack of smoke breath dragons collecting metallic objects for their nest. Hiccup continues on his quest and eventually finds the chest. Inside is the dragon toy he threw away as a young child, which he now cherishes. Fishlegs shows up to combat practice with a glowing dragon egg, so Hiccup takes him back to Dragon Island to return it. Snoutlout steals more eggs with the intent to sell them, so Hiccup and his friends have to scramble to get them all back before the mothers attack the village. While getting ready for a parade, Hiccup feels bad that Toothless is the only dragon of his kind. This leads to some research, and Hiccup finds info on Toothless's species in the Bork Papers. He and Toothless head to a special island where they find what appears to be another Night Fury. However, Mildew had defected and joined the Outcasts, and they had planted fake info in the Bork Papers to lure Hiccup and Toothless away. Alvin tries to make Hiccup teach them how to train dragons, but the young lad refuses. He and Toothless are imprisoned away from each other. Hiccup manages to enlist the help of Mildew, who helps him escape. Toothless escapes on his own and meets up with Hiccup just as reinforcements from Burke arrive. They fight off the outcasts and head back to Burke, although Mildew is recaptured. When Hiccup arrives home, he and Toothless lead the Bork Week Parade. The Screaming Death and the Berserker War after Hiccup's capture, Stoic implemented a no-flying rule in order to keep the teens safe. Of course, they start up their own secret flight club to defy these orders. Hiccup also designs a new shield to help protect him and Toothless. Even after Stoic catches Astrid and Hiccup flying, they still manage to sneak off and stop an outcast ship from attacking. Stoic, realizing the error he made, allows the teens to fly once more. When Fishlegs feels bad about slowing the squad down, Hiccup doesn't do much to stop him from taking on less responsibility. This results in the overproduction of Gronkle Iron and a magnetic mishap involving Meatlug. Hiccup gets stuck to Meatlug and is flown over the sea where they see another outcast ship. They use the magnetic properties to pull all the metal weapons off the ship and then drop the objects back on it, sinking it. Hiccup apologizes for not letting Fishlegs know how important he was. During survival training without their dragons on Dragon Island, Hiccup runs into the berserker Dagger, who is hunting dragons. The dragons appear and Dagger attempts to kill Toothless. Hiccup plays along for a while, but eventually admits that they staged the dragon attack from earlier, earning Dagger as an enemy. While investigating a dry well, Hiccup and Fishlegs discover a titan wing whispering death, known as a screaming death, that had been making large tunnels beneath the island. 
this enormous dragon and its smaller counterparts start tearing the island apart, but the dragon riders manage to drive them off. However, Hiccup knows that this is a temporary fix, as they always return to their birthplace. Snoutloud's dragon, Hook Fang, appears really tired, prompting Hiccup to figure out how to replenish some energy. This leads the group to Fireworm Island, where Snoutloud breaks off a piece of Fireworm Comb, angering the Fireworm Queen. Instead of eating the piece, Hook Fang throws it back to the Fireworms to protect Snoutloud, earning him a sting of venom. This venom actually helps bring his fire back, though. Hiccup supports Astrid in her desire to fight the Flightmare, a dangerous, paralyzing dragon who returns every decade. He learns that she had an uncle who fell to the dragon and wanted to redeem her family name. The group takes advantage of the glowing properties of the dragon and a special kind of algae to scare the beast away, hopefully for good. After training up a group of terrible terrors for a competition, the teens have to use their newly trained helpers to save Meatlug from the outsiders. Thinking that their categorical color tagging was causing dragons to all congregate on single islands, the teens find out that the Screaming Death was actually sinking many home islands. Hiccup tries to lure the Screaming Death away from Dragon Island and Burke, while the others figure out that they can get the tagged dragons to help in fighting the threat. They scare the Screaming Death away, but Dragon Island was damaged. Thankfully, Fishlegs and his Gronkle buddies used molten lava to repair the cracks. After a lesson in disarming traps, the twins head off in a huff. Hiccup realizes it's fire season and warns Stoic, who tells him to watch over the twins, as they're likely to start a fire. He finds the duo trapped, a spreading fire, and a gigantic Typhoomerang, who just so happens to be a grown-up Torch. He has Torch perform a controlled burn, preventing the spread of fire, and rescues the two twins, who then see Torch off. The riders find a new type of dragon frozen in ice after fighting off some berserkers. Hiccup takes a chunk of the specimen back to study. He and Fishlegs consult the dragon manual and realize that it is a Skrill, and it's still alive. The dragon escapes from the ice, putting everyone in danger. They also learn that at some point in history, the Berserkers harness the electric powers of the Skrill. A race to find the dragon kicks off at this discovery, leading to a fight between Burke and the Berserkers. The Skrill almost kills the twins, but Hiccup and Toothless intervene, sending everyone flying away. Hiccup goes to find the twins after this, and discovers them on the Outcast Island. There, he spies on his enemies and finds out that Dagger and Alvin are working together to attack Burke, with Alvin paying Dagger with the Skrill. Hiccup decides that he needs to take the Skrill first, but finds it missing, as Dagger took it without asking. Dagger appears to kill Alvin, and then attacks Hiccup, who tricks the Berserker into getting electrocuted. Hiccup then lures the Skrill back to its icy cave, where it refreezes with the help of the other riders. Snoutlout thinks he's dying and trains a replacement, Gustav. The other riders find it amusing until Gustav hears an order from Stoic to investigate Dagger's latest weapon and goes on his own, getting captured. This leads to Hiccup and Toothless attempting a rescue and getting caught. With directions from Snoutlout, Gustav saves Hiccup and blows up Dagger's weapons. Hiccup makes Gustav an auxiliary. Hiccup, Fishlegs, and the twins find a Skaldrin trapped under a boulder and find it tough to free. Hiccup almost decides to let nature take its course, but the dragon took a liking to Ruff. He helps the twin train the dragon, allowing them to move the rock off its wing. However, the wing was broken, so they had to fashion a makeshift splint. They save the dragon and eventually make it to Changewing Island to meet up with the other riders. Going a little stir-crazy during a winter storm, Hiccup volunteers to take Toothless and search for a missing Johan. He finds him, hears some stories, and takes him back to the village, which is inexplicably empty. Fishlegs falls on him and tells him that a group of speed stingers showed up and everyone took shelter at the cove. When the trio finds everyone at the cove, many villagers, including Stoic, had been stung and paralyzed. Astrid is happy to see that Hiccup is alright and fills him in on the situation. The able riders go and find the speed stingers' leader. They try to catch them in a cage but accidentally break it. In the end, they trap the stingers on the other side of the ice bridge. Hiccup returns Johan to his ship and is rewarded with a jar of ink. During a screaming death drill Hiccup organized, Astrid and Snoutlout start arguing. Their disagreement gets them in trouble with Stoic, who has the riders clear out Mildew's cabbage field. The argument continues until their dragons get involved, so Hiccup has to promise to keep them apart. He continues to struggle with this until it's revealed that a dragon root was somewhere beneath the field, making the dragons act strange. He has Fishlegs and Meatwad move it out. While looking for ingredients to combat Eelpox, Toothless bites an eel in half and strikes Hiccup. The dragon runs away, afraid it'll attack its rider again. Fishlegs shows up to help, and the two try to catch Toothless, running into trouble in the meanwhile. Toothless eventually regurgitates the eel he ate, returning him to normal. With that, they can return to the village with the cure for eelpox. 
The Berserkers plant a whole bunch of metal for Johan to sell to Burke, attracting a swarm of smothering smoke breaths to the village. Hiccup comes up with a plan to lure them back to Breakneck Bog while also taking out the Berserkers. He has the riders drop the metal on the Berserkers ships and so the dragons go and tear all the metal from them. Hiccup then gets Gobber to give up his scrap metal to Johan who guides the dragons back to the bog. Hiccup invents a new listening device, the Thunder Ear. While Stoic compliments it, they pick up a strange noise. Investigating, they find three baby thunder drums stranded out at sea. Thinking nothing of it, they go home. The next day, the dragons are wreaking havoc in Burke, and the only dragon that can get their attention is Thornado. Stoic releases Thornado to protect the babies, and Hiccup is proud of his dad for making the hard choice. After Snoutlout goes against the plan and almost kills Astrid, Hiccup bans him from the academy. He asks his father for advice and learns that being a leader is not easy. Snoutlout is brought back by Alvin and he shares news of the Screaming Death. As they prepare, Dagger sneaks Dragonroot into the academy and releases the dragons, causing chaos. The riders fight off Dagger, but Stoic is kidnapped, leaving Hiccup as acting chief. Hiccup talks to Alvin and agrees to ally with him in order to help Stoic. The two go to Outcast Island with Toothless, enacting a plan to rescue Stoic and return the island to Alvin. Hiccup is captured by Dagger, but Alvin, Mildew, and some dragons cause enough havoc to let him free. Then the other riders come, leading the Screaming Death. At the end of the battle, Dagger is captured, the Berserkers are driven off, and Burke and the Outcasts forge an alliance. Dragon Races Stoic left the village, leaving the running of the regatta to Hiccup. However, the riders and the rest of the villagers prefer Dragon Racing, a competition where dragon riders see who can collect the most sheep throughout the village the fastest. Hiccup, conflicted by tradition, decides to let the dragon races take the lead, and even participates himself when his father returns. He and Fishlegs win the competition after Snoutlout and the twins make a fake black sheep, discovering the dragon eye and moving away from Burke. Years later, after Burke enjoys peace for a while, Dagger escapes prison and swears revenge on Hiccup. Johan manages to band the dragon riders back together and they discover a huge treasure trove. It's here that Hiccup finds a weird device, but the rest of the Dragon Riders are trapped by Dagger. The ship begins to sink, so Hiccup has to choose between his friends and the device. Of course, he chooses his friends. Once they're freed, Hiccup snags the device and heads back to Burke. Gothi tells him that he needs a Snow Wraith Tooth to unlock the device, also known as the Dragon Eye. Hiccup figures out that the Dragon Eye can be activated by any dragon's fire and is full of information like maps, writing, and never before seen dragons. This changes everything. The maps lead the riders away from Burke, so they decide to make an island base. While scouting islands, the other riders get trapped, but Hiccup rescues them with the help of a wild thunder drum and some monstrous nightmare gel. The riders find the perfect island, but must fight and then befriend a new dragon species known as Night Terrors in order to make it work. The group gives Gustav the old runaround one too many times and he runs off with the dragon eye. The riders think he's too immature, which causes him to run away. He's captured by Dagger and tells him how to get the Dragon Eye. He even joins up with the Berserkers. Thankfully, he betrays Dagger and returns the device to Hiccup, and Hiccup discovers new lenses for the Dragon Eye. The twins, apparently the lawful owners of the island, start acting like petty royalty, resulting in everyone being put in the dungeon during a fireworm attack. Everyone agrees that they are equal owners of the island, and the night terrors send the fireworms packing. Stoic starts acting weird, so Hiccup enlists him to help with tracking down a Rumblehorn. This particular dragon has been trying to warn everyone of an impending tsunami, and with Stoic's help, they protect the island. Stoic admits to missing Thornado, and the Rumblehorn becomes his new dragon, Skullcrusher. A new dragon, the catastrophic Quaken arrives and forces the Gronkles out. Snoutlout trains Fishlegs in fighting dirty behind Hiccup's back and they find out that the Quaken was just lonely. A rogue dragon rider starts attacking ships so the riders intervene. It turns out to be Heather and her dragon Windshear. Hiccup is suspicious of her aggressive behavior and learns from Johan that her island was attacked and her parents were killed by Dagger. Heather heads off to confront Dagger but is captured. Hiccup then goes to rescue her and convinces her to save revenge for another day. They learn of Dagger's plan to buy new weaponry and launch a surprise attack to stop him. Hiccup stops Heather from killing Dagger and actually finds evidence that she and Dagger are siblings. Heather then leaves, with much on her mind. Hiccup develops a wingsuit and the riders find an injured speed stinger. Hiccup nurses it back to health and they discover that it has developed webbed feet. Snoutlout and Roughnut bring the Stinger back to its pack, which result in a fight between the Riders and the Stingers, but Hiccup's new wingsuit, along with the help of the injured Stinger, drive them off. 
Snoutloud's dragon, Hookfang, mates with a female monstrous nightmare, and he almost stops being a dragon rider. After an attack on Burke by Dagger's Armada, Astrid decides to train new dragon riders. Hiccup sees that she wants to fail in order to stay on Burke and protect her family. He also finds Dagger attacking Dragon's Edge, and Astrid and Stoic come as backup, eventually supported by the trainees. All of the new riders are promoted to full riders. Astrid and Stormfly are cruising along during a morning flight when suddenly they stumble upon a sketchy group of dragon hunters on the beach. Stormfly gets kidnapped by Riker Grimborn, leaving Astrid stranded. After Astrid gets herself back together, she and the gang start scouring the beach and checking out a wrecked ship called the Reaper, trying to piece together what happened. They didn't find Stormfly, but they do stumble upon a new lens for the Dragon Eye. Turns out it needs acid from a change wing to work. They figure out the hunters are headed to a port and they follow them closely. Long story short, things get pretty intense. Riker always seems to be one step ahead, which is very frustrating. Most of the gang gets captured except for Hiccup and Snoutload, who manage to pull off a daring escape. Meanwhile, they find Heather, who they thought was on their side, but she is actually teamed up with her brother and Riker. Dagger and Heather interrogate Astrid, and they're on the hunt for something called the Dragon's Eye, lost to them ages ago. Riker tries to break them by showing their dragons locked up, but the gang stays strong. Hiccup and Snoutload are on another adventure on the Island of the Screaming Death. They manage to craft some armor suits from the shed scales of the Mother Dragon, making them invincible to the hunter's attacks. They swoop in, rescue the gang, and now it's game on for round two. Just when you think things might settle down, Toughnut shows up with a weird bite mark. Gobber thinks it's from a mythical dragon called the Lycan Wing, and Snoutlout totally messes with Toughnut's head, making him think he's going to turn into a dragon hybrid. Snoutlout has to deliver an axe for a wedding ceremony, but chucks it away in a fit of rage. But it turns out that it landed on the magnetic hide of a new dragon called the Armor Wing. They befriend this dragon and save the day, but the wedding is still a mess. The twins then start a bunch of avalanches, and Hiccup gets stuck in all sorts of tight spots. In the end, it all works out, but Barf and Belch owe Hiccup big time. Astrid learns that the hunters are looking for a snow wraith tooth to supercharge the dragon eye. Astrid is then separated from Hiccup during a crazy snowstorm and bumps into Heather, who's camping out nearby. As it turns out, Heather has been playing spy and feeding Astrid intel, but Astrid suggests that they spill the beans to Hiccup, but Heather shuts this down. Astrid leads the gang to this cave where the snow wraith snoozing away, but Heather's attempts to throw Riker off their trail fail. He finds the cave and demands the dragon eye from Hiccup. Heather manages to mess up Riker's plans, and instead he traps them in the cave to flush out some snow wraiths. Hiccup, Fishlegs, and Snoutlout answer Johan's distress call, only to find themselves facing off against wild dragons gone berserk. Fishlegs ends up getting held hostage by the dragons. Back at the edge, Astrid is fortifying defenses with the twins, and things get heated between her and Roughnut. Roughnut then gets nabbed by the hunters, leaving Astrid and Toughnut to defend the island on their own. While Fishlegs bonds with the wild dragons, Hiccup figures out that Johan was lured away to leave the edge vulnerable. Astrid and Toughnut hold their own against the hunters, but it's Toughnut's pranks that save the day. Astrid and Roughnut patch things up, and the gang leads the wild dragons to safety. Then, a Skrill wreaks havoc on Outcast Island and Burke, seeking revenge on Hiccup and Toothless. They try to trap it, but end up in hot water themselves. In a risky move, Hiccup decides to bait the Skrill towards Riker and Dagger, but things go south fast. The hunters capture the Skrill, and the gang's in deep trouble. They manage to rescue more dragons, but Riker is on to Heather. When they finally come face to face with the real big boss, Viggo Grimborn, he proposes a sneaky alliance with Heather to take down Riker and Dagger. Things get messy when Viggo sets up a trap using the Flightmare, exposing Heather as a spy. Hiccup tries to use the Flightmare's mist against the hunters, but Viggo's too slick. He snags the Flightmare and Heather, leaving Hiccup wondering just how dangerous their new foe really is. So the gang's back at Dragon's Edge after that disastrous showdown with Viggo, but thanks to Roughnut's quick thinking, they still have their hands on the Dragon Eye, which is a relief. Hiccup's feeling the pressure though. Viggo's proving to be a real brainiac, so Hiccup decides to play it safe for once. He sneaks onto Viggo's ship and finds out that Viggo has set up this crazy strategy game with Heather's life on the line. Hiccup manages to outsmart Viggo and saves Heather and the Flight Mare, with a little unexpected help from Dagger. But just when they think they're in the clear, Viggo pulls a fast one and snatches the Dragon Eye right out from under their noses. A few months later, Hiccup is still determined to get the Dragon Eye back, but his determination lands him and Toothless in a tight spot on this island full of hunters. Toothless gets hit with some Dragon Root and can't move, but luckily Dagger shows up out of nowhere to help them out. 
Turns out, Dagger claims he's changed his ways since leaving the Hunters. Hiccup's not too sure about trusting him, but they end up working together to save Toothless. Things get dicey when they're captured, but Dagger comes back swinging, riding Toothless to the rescue. Talk about a roller coaster of emotions. Meanwhile, Snoutlout and Hookfang get recruited by the Fireworm Queen to deal with this pesky cavern crasher. Snoutlout's all gung-ho about repaying the favor to the Queen, so he goes solo on this mission, but when things get hairy, the gang comes together to save the day, and Snoutlout gets a monument-worthy reward. Fishlegs is left in charge while Hiccup's away, but the twins and Snoutlout couldn't care less about his authority. They end up causing chaos, leaving Fishlegs feeling pretty down. But then he stumbles upon this colony of albino night terrors and gains their respect by helping them out. Spitelout also goes missing, as he's been setting up a storehouse on another island and dealing with some pesty singe tails. Stoic gets involved, but their bickering only makes things worse. Eventually they see eye to eye and sort it all out, but not before some dragon drama unfolds. Astrid stumbles upon a drifting ship and ends up catching a deadly plague called the Scourge of Odin. The only cure is rare, saliva from a buffalord, a dragon that's been extinct for ages. With some help from the dragon eye, they track down a living buffalord, but it isn't coming easy. To make matters worse, Viggo shows up, revealing he infected his own crew to get his hands on the cure. It's a tense standoff, but ultimately the buffalord fights back and Astrid gets cured. The gang feels pretty burnt out from staying on the defensive all the time, so they convince Hiccup to let them kick back on a deserted island. However, their dragons start acting wonky and everyone blames Hiccup's work obsession. But actually, there are some parasitic dragons causing the chaos. After some trial and error with Saltwater, they get things back to normal and agree to chill out at home for a bit. Then, Hiccup and Toothless stumble into a hunter trap and end up in a crazy arena where dragons battle it out. Hiccup's on a mission to free the imprisoned dragons while Toothless faces off against the arena champ, the Triple Strike. The gang comes to the rescue and they manage to bust out the dragons and take down the hunters. Now, the Triple Strike is known as Sleuther and wants to be their friend. They also discover a marble mining operation run by hunters using enslaved catastrophic Quakens. Fishlegs really wants to save them, but Hiccup is worried that it might be too late. Astrid, Heather, and Snoutlout discover the hunters are building a fortress to keep the dragons locked up in, so they race against time to free the enslaved Quakens and stop the hunters. Dagger then shows up, asking for help finding Heather. Despite their doubts, Hiccup and the gang agree to help, but things take a dark turn when Dagger sacrifices himself to save them from the hunter's trap. Heather is left mourning her brother, and the gang is left reeling from the loss. So they hatch a plan to infiltrate a dragon auction run by Viggo, aiming to rescue the captive dragons and put a dent in his evil business. Snoutlout and Gobber go undercover with some borrowed gold from Burke, while the rest of the crew sneaks in with Johan's help. Things go south quickly though, and they end up locked up while their dragons are put up for auction. It's tense, but with a little help from a hot burple named Grump, they manage to break free and send the hunters packing. Viggo does get away with Burke's gold, but the dragons are safe. As they continue to mess with Viggo's plans, Viggo offers Hiccup a truce to divide up the archipelago and avoid further conflict. But Hiccup smells something fishy and leads the gang to investigate a nearby island. They end up captured by this tribe called Defenders of the Wing who mistake them for hunters. After some intense negotiations, Hiccup earns their trust and learns that Viggo's been using them as a distraction. Eruptodon, a lava-eating dragon, gets captured, but with the help of Queen Mala and her tribe, they manage to save the day. Viggo then puts a bounty on Hiccup's head, leading to a wild chase with everyone from dim-witted brothers to Savage himself trying to cash in. After a dramatic showdown, Hiccup escapes and the hunters are defeated, but not before Hiccup and Stoic realize that they need to lean on each other more. Just when they think they can catch a break, Dagger shows up, supposedly working with hunters. As it turns out, he's been undercover to save his dragon Shattermaster. With Hiccup and Heather's help, they manage to rescue Shattermaster and the other captured Gronkles. Viggo captures the Submar Ripper, a fearsome title class dragon, and wreaks havoc on Burke. Hiccup dives deep underwater to free the Submar Ripper, facing off against the hunters in a thrilling showdown. Then the midnight sun wreaks havoc on Burke, with everyone showing some seriously wacky symptoms of sleep deprivation. Astrid is deliriously happy, Heather can't seem to coordinate, Fishlegs is paranoid, Snoutlout's mood swings are all over the place, and the twins are seeing things that aren't there. Thankfully, the sun finally sets. Hiccup is itching for revenge against Viggo for his sneaky attack on Burke, and he's caught up with dealing with a pack of new dragons called the Shadow Wings. With Toothless's help, he devises a plan to trap them one by one, teaching him the importance of teamwork and strategy. Finally, they all crash out for a much-needed nap in the darkened basement of Dragon's Edge. 
Soon, the defenders of the wing reach out for help delivering an eruptodon egg to its nesting site inside of a volcano. Hiccup and Fishlegs face some serious hurdles, but they manage to work together and get the job done even when a pack of fire terrors causes chaos. In the end, they trust the fire terrors to take care of the egg and it hatches safely. Then, a lightning storm hits Dragon's Edge and Astrid ends up blinded while trying to rescue the dragons. Despite her fears that she may never see again, she manages to overcome them and trains the aggressive triple strike, regaining her sight in the end. After months of planning, Hiccup is ready to take down Vigo and reclaim the Dragon Eye, but things take a twist when Vigo reveals that Riker has taken over the Hunters and offers an alliance to stop him. Just when Hiccup's feeling overwhelmed, Vigo returns and offers the Dragon Eye as a sign of trust, leaving Hiccup torn between his feelings for Astrid and the growing danger around them. Despite getting the Dragon Eye back, Hiccup and the gang are still wary of Vigo and lock him up. But when Riker and the Hunters come knocking with the Shellfire, a giant dragon, they're in for a wild ride. With the volcano on the edge about to blow, Hiccup and Vigo team up to take down Riker using the Submaripper, the Shellfire's natural enemy. It's a tense showdown, but in the end, Riker meets his fiery demise and Vigo turns on Hiccup, leading to a heart-stopping moment where Hiccup sacrifices the Dragon Eye to save Astrid, and Vigo falls into the volcano. Then, Dragon's Edge starts erupting, and the riders are forced to put their return to Burke on hold to deal with the ongoing threat from the Hunters. With the help of the Dragons of the Dark Deep, they manage to stabilize the volcano, but it's clear that the Hunters are not done causing trouble. While Astrid grapples with choosing a betrothal gift for Hiccup, they get word of traitors disappearing in the northern markets. Turns out, it's all linked to a mysterious dragon known as the Sandbuster, leading to a high-stakes adventure to recover stolen treasures and survive the Dragon's Wrath. Just when things seem settled, they stumble upon Vigo's sword, hinting at more trouble ahead. Meanwhile, the Defender's Eruptodon passes its legacy to its child and heads to Vanaheim, a mythical dragon resting place. The twins, ever the troublemakers, follow the Eruptodon, leaving the riders stranded until Hiccup's clever thinking and a little help from the dragons help them escape. And let's not forget about Fishlegs getting roped into playing his alter ego, Thor Bonecrusher, to rescue Alvin. Things go sideways when Thor takes charge of the bandits, but luckily Hiccup and the riders swoop in to save the day. Hiccup and Astrid head out on a supply run, but Dragon's Edge is attacked by Singetails ridden by the Hunters, led by Krogan and his titan wing Singetail. Even with Hiccup and Astrid's return, the odds are against them, and they're forced to abandon the Edge and seek refuge with the Defenders of the Wing. There, Hiccup starts building a new Dragon Eye to regain the other's trust, while Vigo is still on the hunt for the original Dragon Eye. The Dragon Flyers attack the Defenders of the Wing, leading Hiccup and the Riders on a chase through the archipelago. They return to Burke to prepare for war, but Hiccup refuses to harm the Singetails, leading to tensions with his father and Astrid. Hiccup heads to Storehouse Island to learn more about Singetails and gets pinned down by one, only to be rescued by Spitelout, who helps him discover weaknesses in the Singetails' behavior. The battle for Dragon's Edge continues, with the Riders reclaiming it but discovering that Vigo is still alive and has recovered the Dragon Eye. However, Hiccup is ready with his new Dragon Eye nearing completion, setting the stage for an intense showdown. Meanwhile, Dagger seeks Hiccup's help in deciphering Oswald's diary, leading them back to Vanaheim, while the other riders deal with their own challenges and revelations, including Johan's betrayal and the true mastermind behind the Hunters. Johan's betrayal is revealed, putting the riders in a dangerous position. Despite his attempts to deceive them, Johan's plan is foiled by the twins, leading to a dramatic confrontation where Hiccup outwits Johan and completes his own Dragon Eye. The race to recover the remaining lenses intensifies as the riders realize the stakes of finding the King of Dragons. Back on Burke, tensions rise as Stoic grapples with the fallout of Johan's betrayal and the vulnerability of their island. His distrust leads to drastic actions, but ultimately it is his collaboration with Hiccup that saves Burke from Krogan's invasion, showcasing the power of unity in the face of adversity. Meanwhile, unexpected alliances form as Dagger and Mala find common ground and develop a mutual attraction. The Wing Maidens face their own challenges, but ultimately find strength and inspiration in each other, highlighting the importance of resilience and determination. As relationships evolve and tensions run high, Astrid grapples with her own insecurities about her relationship with Hiccup, leading to moments of introspection and reconciliation between the two. Amidst the chaos, the riders witness the heartwarming ceremony where baby Razor Whips choose their Wing Maidens, serving as a reminder of the bonds of friendship and trust that unite them all. Johan's treachery reaches its peak, leading to a daring rescue mission and a final showdown on Berserker Island. Hiccup and his team face numerous challenges, including rescuing the captured Titan Wing Dramillion and uncovering the true King of Dragons, a bewilder beast on Berserker Island. 
As the conflict escalates, Johan's plans are thwarted, and Hiccup's team emerges victorious with the help of Queen Mala and the Wing Maidens. However, the discovery of Drago Bloodvist's involvement adds a new layer of danger to the situation, as he seeks to acquire a new Bewilder Beast for his own nefarious purposes. In the midst of the chaos, relationships evolve and alliances are forged, culminating in the marriage of Mala and Dagger, and Fishlegs and Snoutlout start to court Roughnut. Stoic's recovery brings hope to Burke, while the decision to destroy both Dragon Eyes reflects Hiccup's commitment to preventing further misuse of their power. Ultimately, the riders emerge triumphant, defeating the hunters and safeguarding the egg of the Bewilderbeast. With the threat temporarily averted, the riders return to Burke, ready to face whatever challenges the future may hold, united in their bond and dedication to protecting dragons and their home. Reunited with his mother, Five years after originally training Toothless, Hiccup has fully integrated dragon riding into the culture of Burke. With this accomplished, Hiccup and Toothless explore the world looking for uncharted territory and also to avoid Stoic. Stoic believes that Hiccup is ready to succeed him as Chief of Burke, which feels like too much to Hiccup. While exploring, Astrid and Stormfly catch up to Hiccup and they meet Erit. He lets them know about other dragon riders and the fact that Drago Bloodvist is currently putting together an army to take over the world. Hiccup and Astrid return to Burke to warn everyone and Stoic orders the island to fortify the village against this madman. Hiccup wants to find a way to do this without war and heads off to find and speak with Drago, hopefully to change his mind. Stoic wants Hiccup to stay behind as Drago cannot be reasoned with, but Hiccup heads off on his own anyway. Above the clouds, he lets loose a furious scream, and Toothless gets a little worried. A new figure appears, a rogue dragon rider, who turns out to be his long-lost mother Valka. She explains to Hiccup that 20 years ago, a dragon broke into their home and played with Hiccup, a gentle and intelligent creature whose soul reflected her own. She goes on to explain what happened when Hiccup was an infant and why she had to leave. From there, the two bond along with their dragons. However, Valka does not want to reason with Drago either, so Hiccup goes to do it by himself once more. As the battle reaches its climax, the sanctuary is suddenly discovered by Stoic and Gobber, leading to a heartwarming reunion between Stoic and his beloved wife. Hiccup is overjoyed to see his parents reunited as their family bond strengthened once more. However, their happiness is short-lived, as Drago launches a final, devastating attack on the sanctuary, catching them off guard. The Bewilder Beasts engage in a fierce battle to determine the true alpha of all dragons, with Drago's Bewilder Beast emerging victorious. In a desperate attempt to reason with Drago and prevent further bloodshed, Hiccup confronts him, but Drago remains steadfast in his ruthless control of power. Tragically, the conflict takes a devastating turn when Toothless, under the control of Drago's Bewilder Beast, unleashes a fatal blast aimed at Hiccup. Stoic heroically intervenes, pushing Hiccup out of harm's way and taking the full force of the blast himself. The loss of his father leaves Hiccup grief-stricken and filled with a sense of profound loss. Despite his anguish, Hiccup finds himself torn as Toothless, released from the Bewilder Beast's control, approaches him. Fearing for his dragon's safety and struggling to come to terms with his father's death, Hiccup is forced to make a heart-wrenching decision, urging Toothless to leave him behind for his own safety. At a funeral for Stoic, Hiccup says his last wishes to his father. Burke is frozen and hope seems lost, but Hiccup is inspired by his mother and decides to go avenge his father and get his friend back. He flies back to Burke on baby dragons and confronts Drago. He disenchants Toothless by saying he knows the dragon would never hurt him or Stoic willingly. This works, and Hiccup and Toothless fend off Drago and his Bewilderbeast. They think it's over, but the Bewilderbeast manages to let loose another blast of ice. However, they survive, Toothless now glowing with plasma. He uses the plasma blast to free the other dragons who join in the fight against Drago. One last plasma blast destroys the Bewilderbeast's horn, sending it and Drago into retreat. Toothless becomes the new alpha, and Hiccup is crowned Chief of Burke by Gothi. He builds a statue in his father's honor and shares a romantic moment with Astrid, helping the people of Nepenthe. Hiccup's leadership and courage are once again put to the test as he navigates through challenging situations on Nepenthe Island. Despite initial reluctance, Hiccup agrees to go help Calder and the people of Nepenthe in investigating a mysterious tremor shaking the island. As they journey, Hiccup is struck by the reverence shown to Toothless by Thunderdrums and Scaldrons, a testament to Toothless's role as the Alpha Dragon. However, Hiccup remains focused on the task at hand, as others are distracted by the island's hot pools. They then discover that Calder has drugged their food in an attempt to reveal his transformation into a dragon. Hiccup and his riders find themselves imprisoned. 
Yet, resourceful and determined, they manage to free themselves and confront Calder. Through quick thinking and understanding of dragon behavior, Hiccup identifies the source of the Tremors as the awakened Forever Wings, ancient dragons dormant within the island. Despite the chaos and anger, Hiccup ensures the safety of both the people and the dragons, preventing a catastrophic outcome. In a final confrontation with Calder, Hiccup demonstrates his strategic prowess and ultimately emerges victorious, albeit with a heavy heart for the loss of life. His commitment to peace and reconciliation is evident as he extends a gesture of goodwill to Mick and the people of Nepenthe before returning to Burke. Back home, Hiccup continues to lead by example, assigning tasks for the rebuilding efforts and honoring his father's memory with a monument. Through his actions, Hiccup reaffirms his role as a compassionate and capable leader, dedicated to both protecting humans and dragons. At some point, Hiccup had to fight against a mystery class dragon known as a Silk Spanner, finding the hidden world and a new Night Fury. In the aftermath of the events, Hiccup, now the chieftain of New Burke, faces the challenge of managing the overpopulation of dragons on the island. Determined to find a safe haven for dragons, he sets out on a quest to locate the Hidden World, a legendary sanctuary for dragons mentioned by his late father Stoic. Meanwhile, Toothless encounters a white female dragon known as the Light Fury, who is being held captive by warlords and is later given to the notorious dragon hunter Grimmel the Grizzly. Toothless becomes enchanted by the Light Fury and the two form a connection. As Grimmel threatens Burke and its inhabitants, Hiccup prepares for a confrontation, rallying the citizens and dragons to leave Burke in search of the hidden world. Along the way, they discover a new island which they name New Burke and begin to settle there. Realizing that Toothless's inability to fly solo is hindering his relationship with the Night Fury, Hiccup builds an automatic tail fin for Toothless. When Toothless flies off with the Light Fury to an unknown land, Hiccup, Astrid, and the other dragon riders embark on a scouting patrol and stumble upon the hidden world. However, their presence here puts them in danger, and Toothless ultimately rescues them and returns them to New Burke. Their newfound sanctuary is short-lived as Grimmel follows them and captures Toothless and the Light Fury. With Astrid's encouragement, Hiccup sets out to stop Grimmel and his army, ultimately leading to a climactic battle. In a daring move, Hiccup frees Toothless and the Light Fury, but Toothless is tranquilized mid-air. In a moment of sacrifice, Hiccup frees the Light Fury and implores her to save Toothless, leading to Grimmel's demise. In the end, Hiccup realizes that dragons and humans cannot coexist peacefully, and bids farewell to Toothless as the dragons are set free to live in the hidden world. Hiccup and Astrid marry and become the chieftains of New Burke, marking a new chapter for both humans and dragons alike. Remembering Dragons at Snoggletog As Hiccup reflects on the past Snoggletog traditions and the absence of Toothless, he faces the realization that the younger generation of New Burke is fearful of dragons. This prompts him and Astrid to organize a Snoggletog pageant aimed at celebrating their friendship with dragons and educating the village children about their shared history. However, Hiccup struggles when Gobber's script for the pageant portrays a skewed version of events, with Stoic as the hero and Hiccup portrayed as weak. Despite his reservations, Hiccup reluctantly agrees to proceed with the play, hoping to still convey the message of friendship with dragons. During the performance, a fire breaks out on stage, leading to chaos and danger. Hiccup, wearing a mechanical Toothless puppet suit, finds himself in a precarious situation. However, Toothless, who had been watching from afar with his dragon family, swoops in to rescue him, playing the role of himself in the smoke-filled confusion. After the incident, Hiccup remains unaware that Toothless had come to his rescue, as he continues to grapple with the misunderstanding between him and his daughter Zephyr about Toothless's absence. The family's Snoggletog celebration takes an unexpected turn when they discover a mysterious glowing stone left behind by Toothless as a parting gift. As Toothless departs from New Burke with his family, Hiccup is left to reflect on the bittersweet nature of their bond and the passage of time, while also cherishing the memories of their adventures together. And that, my friends, is the timeline of Hiccup. Man, what an adventure. This guy went from zero to hero to legend. What did you think of this video? Did you learn anything new about Hiccup? What's your favorite Hiccup and Toothless moment? Do you prefer bearded or unbearded Hiccup? Make sure you let me know down in the comments and subscribe to Channel Frederator for more like this. Thanks for watching and remember, Frederator loves you.